What's shaking everybody, it's your boy King of the Golden State coming at you with a haul video of sorts. Um, I really don't even know what to call this. It's kind of a, a hodgepodge of uh, stuff from, you know, from stuff I picked up from the comic shop. So that's pretty much the bottom line. And, uh, yeah, um, a lot of it, you know, I kind of, I kind of got into the whole thing for a minute with uh comic magazines and comic fanzines for a little bit and um yeah i figured i'd pick up a few of them a couple of graphic novels from back in the day which i picked up and i figure i'd show you guys some of the stuff i have i've been kind of I, I gotta blame eta nick on some of it because he really got me into the you know comic uh magazines shout out to e eta nick but uh yeah uh check out his channel i'll leave a link down below but yeah uh ever since then i've been kind of hooked on some of the comic fanzines and and comic magazines and such so i i want to show you guys what i picked up i also picked up some regular comics too so it mixed in so let's get started this one i picked up dollar bin and this i had never seen until i was digging in dollar bin i think it's a i think it's a one shot uh, Le Legion of Monsters, Werewolf by Night by uh, Mike Carey a cover and interiors by Greg Land and Greg Land clearly does kick ass work and for you know, I saw this for a dollar at the comic shop I could not pass it up I didn't even know this damn thing came out especially with the whole popularity of the whole monsters thing going on right now you know, with uh, you know Kong and Godzilla and what have you, so, um, and of course the Monsters Unleashed series, which is now going to be an ongoing series of my Marvel, so, I saw this for, for a dollar in a dollar bin, and I was like, you know what, by Greg Land, written by Mike Carey, and of course Scotty Young, who I'm not a big fan of, but whatever, but I had to pick it up, you know, I mean, especially if Greg Land's doing the interiors, can't wait to read it, so, you know, for a dollar, that is definitely a bargain. This one I also got for a dollar at another comic shop somewhere in the uh, Dublin Pleasanton area of of uh of the Bay Area. Not not Dublin, England, of course, or Dublin, sorry, Ireland. As a J. Scott Campbell cover of this uh book called Unnatural Selection. It's a uh it's a uh, thing by Active Images who did Hip Flask. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Rick Starklings and Comic Craft. Like like if you look at any almost any other comic book. Rick Starklings did uh, lettering for a lot of the comics you probably collect. And he also did his own creation called um, Hip Flask. And Starklings is a damn good a damn good letterer. He's one of the best, in my opinion. And he has his own thing. So I was going through uh, this uh, comic shop's uh, dollar bin over in Dublin. And, you know, I saw this cover and I thought, hey, it's a pretty cool cover. Campbell? Yeah, Campbell, there was times he was kind of like, you know, late on his books, but... He really still cranks stuff out. He still does, in my opinion, but mostly cover of the cover variety, and that's fine. I can live with that. I mean, if he, you know, if he knows his strengths, if he knows that he can only do covers, not interiors anymore, then let him stick to that. You know, I got no problem with that. I mean, I like J. Scott Campbell stuff. Let's see, I might have some J. Scott Campbell stuff in my pile here. I can't remember if I do. I'm just digging things out as I go along. Uh, what else I got? Oh yeah, speaking of fanzines. I was talking about earlier. Picked this up. That was in the dollar bin. Uh, Marvel Age sixteen. I just like I just like this cover. It's not. There's nothing special about it, except the cover. In my opinion, it's a really cool cover. I never seen um, New Mutants, you know, with a cover like this, and uh, done by Bill Sankovitz. And I'll be down at the San at the <laughs> San Diego. I won't be at San Diego this year. I'll be at um, the WonderCon. Uh, actually, later on this week. And uh, hopefully you'll see some other YouTubers and other uh, Instagrammers and what have you. You know, people I've seen from the social media. You know, hang out with them. I'm just going down there solo. You know, just on my own. And, uh, yeah. You know, anybody want to hang out? Whatever. But that's beside the point. Uh, yeah, I saw this for a dollar. I love the cover. I might actually take this with me down to the, to the WonderCon. Because I believe, from what I understand... Um, Bill Sinkovitz is going to be down there, and I wouldn't mind getting him to sign this, and maybe I'll even get it slabbed. I like this cover. It's really, 
this should have been like issue one of New Mutants. It's a really nice cover. You know, I mean, you know, it's it's just you know a really cool cover. So, and yet, don't sleep on the Marvel Ages Age magazines. You know, uh, a lot of those you can find for a dollar, maybe less, and they really got some really cool covers. Not you know, I mean, the interior is okay. It's like whatever. It's just kind of like a ma it's a news magazine. Just keep that in mind. You know, if you never collected Marvel Age. And it's got some really cool covers. Like, uh, I found this other one by Marvel Age. I think this is Bill Sienkiewicz as well. If I recall, I might be wrong. Actually, it might be Bill Sienkiewicz. I could tell by the lining and everything. It looks like Bill Sienkiewicz. And, uh, it's another Marvel Age I thought was really cool. So, you know, keep in mind, you go through a bunch of those Marvel Age books in a dollar bin, because you'll definitely find them in a dollar bin. They're not, you're not going to find like a, you know, $10 Marvel Age book if you do. And you buy it, I feel bad for you, but um, yeah, a lot of a lot of good covers. So I would just this is like the one series. This is like, in my opinion, the one series I would just pick up for the covers only. You know, like, like these Marvel Ages are really cool. I might look around for more of them at the WonderCon this year. But uh, yeah, off note, side note, if you guys are at the WonderCon, yeah, uh, I'll be the tall guy in the crowd. So you know, tall guy, black guy with glasses in the crowd. If you happen to find me, you know, swing by and say what's up. Because personally, you'll see me before I see you. It's hard for me to spot everybody in the crowd. When I just stick out of the crowd, you could just point me out and say, hey, I know you. That kind of thing. Also, I picked this up from uh, one of my comic shops. The Savage Sword of Conan, the Barbarian. Uh, it's a uh, first issue. I was actually looking for Savage Tales. That was my fault. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but I didn't mind picking up the first issue of uh, the Savage Sword of Conan the Barbarian. I love these big old magazine issues, and I believe John Buscema did the interior on this, and uh, and I believe this cover is by Boris Vallejo. I might be wrong. I don't feel like opening it to find out, but it's, you know, it's I just like the cover, and you know, it's issue number one. I don't really see myself getting all the other issues. I think I might just get this one issue and keep it. You know, so pick that up. Uh, also, I don't know. Is this a, is this book important? I'm not sure, guys. Tell me. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I know it's important. Actually, this is our first appearance of Bubba Fett, the bounty hunter. Uh, of course, it's uh, Star Wars magazine, The Empire Strikes Back. I've yet to open this and read it, but uh, I figure, why the hell not, you know? I mean, it's the first appearance of uh, Bubba Fett. And I got this for a pretty good price. The uh, I can't I can't remember what the price was, but I know the price was good, and I was pleased with it. But I figure, what the hell? It's you know it's really well kept, as far as I'm concerned, as far as condition goes. This one I picked up from uh, the comic shop as well, and I was like, I just like the cover. This one I'm this one is by the cover is definitely by Bill Sinkovitz. I might actually take this down with me to WonderCon and have him sign it. Yeah, I love this cover. It's Dazzler the Movie. Yeah, it's a Marvel graphic novel. I kind of wish Marvel did come out with graphic novels like this again. These are, you know, in the same kind of format and just did stuff. You know, I mean, clearly they do graphic novels. But original graphic novels in this kind of format would be really cool again. A nice little throwback. So, uh, yeah. Uh, by James Shooter. Not Jim Shooter. It's kind of hilarious. But, uh... Yeah, I, I just love those Marvel graphic novels and, uh, so much that I picked up. What did I pick up? Where is that? And I found this as well. Another Marvel graphic novel. I'm not sure if this thing is important. Is this important, guys? I'm not sure. Somebody tell me. Uh, actually, it's the death of the, it's the death of Captain Marvel by Jim Starlin. And uh, yeah, this is one I did not read yet. You know, during my days of collecting comics so i'm looking forward to reading it now that i have it so you know jim starlin you know i mean one hell of a guy you know when it comes to putting together something like this you know the death of captain marvel then again if you know anything from marvel nothing ever stays dead so yeah both books i'm looking forward to reading i might like i said get this one signed by uh Sin sinkevitz or i might actually get the marvel age signed by him just for the hell of it you know nothing you know i don't want to take anything too heavy down there and also these talk about something that's a throwback to, 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 to back in the day 
I'm looking for the other issue. I think I'm going to find it on mycomicshop.com. But these I used to have. The Marvel Urine Review. You guys ever seen these before? I've seen these before. This is a long time ago. But uh, I love this. I mean, these are really cool. I mean, I, I used to have these and I sold them. You know, to like my local comic shop back in the day. But I mean, like, look at the, uh, like, this will probably pick, maybe it'll just pick up on camera. But like the little uh, notes here on the bottom. Plus Tony, Sp Tony Stark's spleen. What about Ant-Man? That's funny how that, you know, that's like, that might be relevant even today. Or I Married a Scroll. That's hilarious, you know. And I just love this cover by uh, John Romita Jr., you know, an artist that you know some 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 fans like and some fans don't. I love John Romita Jr. He's one hell of an artist. So pick that up. Also, uh, let me see. That's not the only one. Also, they also have that. It was another Marvel year in, year in review, 1991, and of course the cover is clearly by Arthur Adams. Uh, well done. Dude. I love the stuff here. Um, yeah, like I said, I love these, uh, I mean, I love these magazines with the format, you know, sort of like Professor X, Man of the Year, or also, you know, uh, <laughs> like, uh, here, like, like this whole, this whole, you know, line here, you know, the X-Men expose, look out below Donald Trump, the Kingpins Corporation is crumbling too, which is, you look at that line, it's kind of hilarious today. Or, you know, Profile, Blaze is back, Spider-Man is smeared, and Darkhawk is discovered. So, it's kind of cool. So, got that. Also, another one was a Marvel Year Interview 1990. And, of course, the Man of the Year back then was Captain America. You know, I mean, this, these are really cool magazines. I saw, these on my, I saw these on the wall in my local comic shop, and I was like, you know what? Give them to me. Because <laughs> I like those. I used to have them, too. But... It's good to have them for just for the nostalgic sake, you know? So, I don't know. I find myself getting a lot of Marvel fa like comic fanzines now, and it's kind of cool. Nice little throwback to, like, the back in the day and what have you. So, what else did I pick up? Let me see. Uh, picked up that uh, Ego to Living Planet. Uh, I think it was the first full appearance of that character for uh, Thor. Didn't get it for 65. Got it for less than that. Uh, God, I think it was like like 50. You know, not um, you know, saying anything different there, but you know, got it for cheaper than that price. But uh, yeah, got that. Of course, picked up some more of these Image uh, magazines, which I'm personally bagging because why not? Because you know, I mean. I don't know. I think I'm starting to grow into the whole fanzine type of thing, and the fanzine thing is cool. I, I'm glad. I'm glad it's, you know guys like Image, you know, team, you know, like uh, companies like Image are doing stuff like that, and I love it. So, you know, long, I'm, I'm picking it up as long as they keep them coming. So, yeah, guys, uh, that's about it. You know, I got nothing else more uh, except for sleep down the line in my future. I'm getting tired, but. Uh, probably got one more video before I head down to WonderCon, yeah, and, clear, and clearly that video is going to probably be the uh, yeah, Wednesday pile, but other than that, uh, yeah, tell me what you guys think, please give me a like down there below, and give me a comment, tell me what you think, like I said, and give me a, you know, you know, feel free to subscribe, you know, you know, it's that little subscription button if you haven't done that, and if you have done it, welcome to the party, pal, peace.